Mammograms are x-rays of the breasts which are used to screen women for breast cancer. But the trouble with mammography is that it's less than perfect and there are some women for whom it can be quite unreliable and falsely reassure them that their breasts are clear when in fact they're not. That's why researchers at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota have developed a remarkable new way of taking pictures of the breasts which might help these women. We're seeking to help a large proportion of women, and most of them don't know whether they're in or out of this proportion. It's women with dense breast tissue, which is defined as the proportion of tissue in the breast, which is made up of dense connective tissue as opposed to fat. And the problem with dense breast tissue is that it appears white on a mammogram, but so do tumors. So it's very difficult to distinguish between those two things in looking for breast cancer on a mammogram. Some people have said that women with dense breasts are not only at increased risk of missed cancers on mammography, they're at increased risk of breast cancer just because they've got dense breasts. You're absolutely right. So it's a double-edged sword. And this has actually been demonstrated in numerous well-conducted studies that the risk factor of breast density is more powerful even than having a first-degree relative with breast cancer. More than that? Mm -hmm. And why is that? That has to do with the dense breast tissue being the portion of the breast where breast cancer is most likely to develop. The more of that tissue you have, that is proliferative tissue, tissue that's in active replication. And when one of those replicative steps goes wrong, cancer can begin. Does a woman know she has dense breasts? They're firmer or they don't sag as much? I mean, what's the story? That's a great question. And actually, you can't tell if you have dense breasts without looking at your mammography report because we define breast density based on the mammographic appearance. So unless your physician has brought this up to you or you have asked, it's unlikely that you would know. And the problem is the mammography misses tumors. It does. It's not that the radiologist isn't reading the mammogram accurately. It's that you actually cannot distinguish the cancer from the background tissue. Hello. Come on in. So what do you do? You fire x-rays at the breast? It's not x-rays. It's a different kind of radiation. It's called gamma radiation. And the gamma radiation comes from a small amount of injected material that's used all the time routinely in imaging the heart. But it really wasn't routinely used in imaging anything else. So is it thallium? It's sestamibi. And it turns out that exactly because of this replicative issue that we've discussed in, in tumors, anything that rapidly turns over, any cell that rapidly turns over will soak up this sestamibi like a sponge. And we're able to see tumors light up in the breast but has no effect on the background density, even if it's a very dense breast. So it's a nuclear medicine technique. That's exactly right. So the woman, just to explain, so the woman gets an injection of radioactive substance and then you put what's called a gamma camera in front of her. You, we have a, actually a two detector camera, so the, the camera actually just gently holds the breast tissue in place, but there's no painful compression as there is with mammography. And then an image is acquired of the breast tissue, and what's different about this image is that a mammogram really just shows you a picture of the breast tissue, but this image shows you the behavior of the cells within the breast. And therefore, it's a completely different paradigm of looking at the breast. One of the problems with new tests is that they're not terribly well studied. And therefore, you don't really know how accurate they are. And the risk is that you overdiagnose tumors and put women through needless worry and needless, needless other investigations like biopsies and excisions, or you continue to miss tumors. What's your research showing about the reliability of this? That is the best question that I have been asked because you're you're absolutely right that historically we've jumped on the wagon of the latest new machine and adopted it at tremendous expense without studying it rigorously and that's a mistake but on the flip side of that in order to do, to truly study a breast imaging method over the lifespan of patients with breast cancer it takes 20 or 30 years to demonstrate that a particular method is associated with a reduction in death from breast cancer. So what are you showing? Our, we are consistently finding three to four times more cancers with molecular breast imaging than can be seen on mammography. But you raise a very, very good point, and that is 
How often are you getting the answer right? Are you subjecting women to unnecessary tests and biopsies that don't yield cancer? And the answer is that our false positive rate, the times that we find something that really isn't anything serious, is as is equal to or even lower than mammography. And when we do precipitate a biopsy, we are tenfold more confident in that biopsy than mammography is. And your false negative rate? In our other false, words, missing tumor rate? Our false negative rate is much, much, much lower than mammography. The big question is, are you finding tumors that matter? So often when testing a new breast imaging method, the goal is to find small, small, small cancers because it makes sense that early detection would lead to better outcomes. But some of them won't go anywhere or do anything. Yes, and we certainly have found early cancers. We can find cancers as small as three to four millimeters and do that routinely. But what has shocked us is how often we find large cancers that truly are not seen on the mammogram, even in retrospect, even when you know where they are. Really? Four centimeter tumors we are finding. That big? That's extraordinary. And so my question is, why is the bar so low? Why do we have to say that it only matters if we can find really small tumors? I feel that we are finding a range of tumors that could truly change mortality outcomes for women with breast cancer. Is it expensive? It's similar to a digital mammogram and far less expensive than an MRI machine. And which women, which women would qualify? These would be women, say, between 40 and 50, found dense breasts and mammography, state of the art, might become, we're going to do this other test on you because we just can't be sure with the mammography. Right. I, I would be so uh, disappointed if my message sounded like I was anti-mammography. I'm wild about mammography. Uh, mammography is the only test we have that has been shown to reduce death from breast cancer as a screening test. But it's not the right test for all women. So f I would really advocate an individualized approach to screening women. Have your initial mammogram at 40 and find out if you have dense breast tissue. If you have dense breast tissue, then an alternative imaging device would be very important for you. And at that point in your life when your breast tissue is no longer dense, which generally happens gradually as women age, it would be fine to go back to screening mammography. Dr. Deborah Rhodes of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota.